What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kenny Kinetics, where learning is made easy. Today, we're going to discuss a general overview of the rubral spinal tract. So let's go. Y'all, let's dive into the spinal tract. So before we get into the rubral spinal tract, I'm going to do a quick overview of the nervous system. Within the body, you have peripheral nerves that sends and receives signals to and from the central nervous system. The central nervous system is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord. And we're going to break it down a little further. As you can see here, we have cross sections of the spinal cord, medulla, pons, midbrain, and cerebrum. I want to do a quick surface anatomy lesson of the brain. The brain contains four lobes. Here we have the temporal lobe, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, frontal lobe, and at the base of the brain lies the cerebellum and the brain stem that leads to the spinal cord. The frontal lobe has structures that are important for the rubrospinal spinal tract. These structures are the primary motor cortex, the premotor cortex, and the supplemental motor area. These structures play different roles in conducting the motor command from the brain to the spinal cord. The rubrospinal tract is a part of the indirect motor pathways, which also include the reticulospinal and vestibulospinal tract. These tracts send nerve impulses from the brainstem to cause automatic movements and help coordinate body movements. The rubrospinal tract is responsible for sending signals that activate skeletal muscles that cause precise and voluntary movements of the distal parts of the upper limb. The rubrospinal tract assists the corticospinal tract in activating these muscles, but only in the upper limb, as the corticospinal tract does both the upper and lower limb. Therefore, the rubrospinal tract only plays a small role in activating the distal muscles of the upper limb. So here we have a picture of the cerebral cortex. And as you can see, shaded in red, is the primary motor cortex. The primary motor cortex has its own homunculus. If you recall from my previous videos, the homunculus is a map of all the body parts. The primary somatosensory cortex and cerebellum have its own homunculus as well. The motor command from the primary motor cortex, premotor cortex, and supplemental motor area is going to form together within the cerebral cortex and send this motor command down into the brainstem. This motor command from the cerebrum will travel down the brainstem until it reaches the midbrain. Located in the midbrain, here is the red nucleus. The red nucleus sends this motor command down the brainstem and travels through the pons and the medulla and continue to travel down the spinal cord until it enters the rubrospinal tract, which is in the lateral aspect of the spinal cord here. The signal enters through the rubrospinal tract and synapses with a motor neuron in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. Here, the motor neuron in the ventral horn of the spinal cord is going to activate the skeletal muscles of the distal limb. All right, guys, let's recap the steps of the rubrospinal tract. Number one, the motor plan from the premotor cortex, primary cortex, and supplemental motor area send a signal to the red nucleus in the midbrain. Number two, the signal decussates and travels down the brainstem through the pons and the medulla. Number three, the signal enters through the rubrospinal tract within the lateral aspect of the spinal cord and synapses with the motor neuron in the ventral horn. Number four, the motor neuron activates the distal skeletal muscles of the arm. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. 
make sure you subscribe, like, share, and leave comments. Tune into my next video where we will take a look at the reticulospinal tract. Thanks for watching.